Hey guys, welcome back to the channel, Ron Man here as always, and today we're going to be taking a look at Dino City for the Super Nintendo. Also, if you're new here and you like my content, please consider hitting that subscribe button and also hit that bell notification so you stay up to date with Ron Man Gaming. Dino City was developed and published by IREM for the Super Nintendo in 1992, and is based off of the film Adventures in Dinosaur City, which I've never seen nor would ever want to see. Dino City is an action platformer with six worlds, each with five stages. At the end of a world, there's a boss fight, and to this game's credit, most boss fights are actually pretty interesting. The first boss, for example, has you punching blocks, and upon shattering, the shrapnel causes damage to said boss. At the end of most stages, there are two doors. The only difference between these doors is which level follows, so you actually kind of get to pick your route, although first time playing, you won't know which door leads to which stage. That being said, you don't get to skip stages, you only get to somewhat pick the order in which you play them. Also, sometimes these doors lead to a bonus stage, where you can collect hearts, 1-ups, and eggs. By the way, collect 50 eggs and you'll earn a 1-up. You get to choose between two different teams, Timmy and Rex, or Jamie and Tops. Both are very similar, except Rex has a punch and Tops has a projectile attack. Timmy and Jamie are the same and both have a gun which can freeze enemies. Throughout the game you can switch between the human or the dinosaur. Sometimes this is actually used to solve problems. For example, here I switched to Timmy to walk underneath this skull and jump on top to lower it making room for Rex. I think this is a really interesting buddy system mechanic but sadly it isn't used a whole lot which brings me to the level design. Eh. Don't get me wrong, there are some great ideas here and there's a decent amount of variety. There are roller coaster levels, surfing levels, really neat boss fights and so on, but nothing is ever fully realized, like the buddy system I just mentioned. In fact, the further in this game you get, the worse the level design becomes. Instead of increasing the difficulty by having the player utilize all their abilities in interesting ways, they just make levels more cheap and give you less room to screw up. Sometimes enemies just fall on you, or platforms just go away. Sometimes Sometimes enemies appear so fast that you don't have enough time to react. For example, here I see a bird. Shit, I don't know what to do. Should I just shoot him or jump on him? If I shoot, I could miss. Okay, I'll jump on him. Bullshit! Now, I slowly walked you through that scenario, but in real time, it's more like, ah, jump, fuck! On top of that, some enemies seem to take forever to kill. Okay, so the level design is not the best, but the real problem with this game are the controls. In theory, they're fine. B is jump, Y is attack, and R allows you to switch between the human and the dinosaur. But man, these controls are laggy. This game often eats your inputs. There were so many times where I pressed B or Y to jump or attack and nothing happened. How did they not figure this out during playtesting? Not only are the controls laggy, but the frame rate often slows to a crawl, especially in what I call the Resnor stages. Here you have to travel along this thing while it moves along slowly. It's actually a pretty neat effect, but man does it cause lag. There are three Resnor stages and this thing gets bigger each time you see it, which causes even more slowdown. Okay, I know I just shit on this game pretty hard, but I don't think this game is bad. In fact, I was pleasantly surprised. I picked this game up for $8 at my local game store and with a cover like this, I really didn't know what to expect. Expect. The graphics here are decent, they're not gonna blow you away or anything, but there are neat little touches like when the game transitions from morning to afternoon, then again to night. I like the fact that there are two playable characters, each with slight differences. This gives replay value because you're gonna play the game a little differently with Rex than you would Tops. I would recommend choosing Tops if this is your first time playing. It's a little easier with the projectile attack. Dino City doesn't have a battery save, but it does have a password, and I think they did a good job with the password. Yes, it is is kind of long, but I love that they changed the look of some of the letters. For example, the O looks like this. I assume this was to prevent confusion, as an O looks a lot like a zero. What a great idea. Props to IREM for that. I should also mention that Dino City has a two-player alternating mode. So that's Dino City. It's a neat little action platformer with some glaring flaws. If you can handle the flaws, I would recommend it. You can probably beat it within an hour or so, even with these flaws considered. Overall, I give Dino City a 6 out of 10. Have you guys played this game? Let me know down in the comments below. This isn't a game that I often hear people talk about, so I am curious. I want to thank you again so much for watching. Please make sure to hit that subscribe button. Please make sure to hit that bell notification and that like button, and I'll see you next time.